The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. You are now tuned in to the PA Power Podcast featuring Jeff Upson and Eric Knobsnyder. PA Power Wrestling. PA Power Wrestling. Pennsylvania is wrestling. What's going on, wrestling fans? I'm your host, Jeff Upson, joined as always by Eric Knopsnyder. And Eric, we're getting ready to go on the road and we're heading out to St. Louis. Yeah, as long as the snow doesn't uh, keep us in, we're ready to hit the road. Well, I mean, out here in Pittsburgh, uh, it's it, we didn't get anything really, so I don't know what you did up in those mountains, but we're we're, we're all We're working good. on about a foot here. You are. Yeah. Uh, well, as Mark Billow said, get your dog sled out because the train's leaving for for St. Louis tomorrow, and you better be on it. <laughs> I'll be there. So, Eric, we're 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 wrapping up the the state. Uh, high school, the, the state high school season. We just finished the state tournament. Uh, we got the Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic um, next week, and we'll, we'll be talking about that next week. Uh, the teams have still uh, have yet to been set in stone. Um, the USA teams is pretty much going to stay the same, I believe. Um, but we're still waiting for official word on on both of those lives. But when they do come out, we will be posting something on that. So uh, we're not going to we're not going to delve into the the recaps of the the state tournament. Um, because this would be uh, a four-hour podcast as opposed to a one-hour podcast, and uh, we both have to get packed for St. Louis. So, um, Eric, I, I just want to go through these brackets, the uh, NCAA brackets, um, and really highlight going through the the forty-nine Pennsylvania wrestlers who will be represented in St. Louis. Um, and, and it starts out at one twenty-five. We've got a, a few state or uh, national qualifiers here, and a couple big names that. Uh, I think are, are poised for a, a big run, but let's start at the top. Jake Ramacki, uh, who's at Clarion now, he was at Pitt for the last two years, I believe. Um, he's a redshirt sophomore. Uh, he was a fe- uh, four-time state medalist at Erie Cathedral Prep up in District 10, um, and he comes in with a 19-7 and record on the year. Yeah, and he's got Nathan Crazer of Campbell in the first round. So uh, number 16 seed there that he'll be facing in the first round. Not a, a, a great draw, but not an awful one either. When you've got, If you're going to face a seeded guy, 16 is about as, as the best you can do. Yeah, I mean, I guess you're right. When it comes to, to seeding, you're, you're better off facing that 16th seed than the, the fourth seed right off the bat. But um, he, he's on the top half. He's actually uh, about number 12. So if he would win that, he's likely to get Thomas Gilman, the top seed from Iowa. So uh, it is tough sledding for Jake or Mackey. Um, but, I mean, this is if he gets that, that uh, upset win in the, the first round, um, it, that sets him up nicely uh, when he falls to the consolation round. So um, I think he's, he's one that we should probably uh, keep an eye on. But the one I, I really like in this weight class, and that's Darian Cruz from Lehigh. Uh, Darian Cruz has been one of the most consistent wrestlers there is for uh, Lehigh. And uh, over the last couple of years, he's a redshirt junior. Um, and he's a, an All-American. He was an All-American uh, in 2014, it was actually his his true freshman year uh, wrestling for Lehigh. After he spent four years at Bethlehem Catholic, where he was a two time state champion, and last year he was one win shy of that All American finish. So he he was one win shy of of getting his second All American finish. But look at the first round matchup he has against Dylan Peters. Dylan Peters is is a heck of a wrestler who's a two time All American himself. Yeah, that's a, a really strange matchup. You're the good news, bad news situation. Good news is you're the fourth seed. Bad news is you've got a first round match against the two time All American. Dylan Peters is is obviously a very good wrestler. It's been a rough year for him. He's been injured. He's only wrestled 14 matches and he's only eight and six. So you're not quite sure what you're going to get exactly, but you know the talent is there. If he if he's healthy and in shape, eh, this is a really tough first round matchup. Yeah, I mean, I just look at it and it's dangerous because I mean, I I don't know what kind of shape or or you know health Dylan Peters is in, but. I mean, he's a redshirt senior who has twice already finished in the top eight at national. So uh, that he, he's obviously pretty good. So whether he's he's a hundred percent or not, Darian Cruz is is not gonna he, he's not gonna be able to let up at all in his first round. Not that anyone's going. I mean, this is the national tournament. Obviously, uh, everyone's there for a reason. They're they're all pretty good. But um, 
you know, I, I'm just surprised to see Dylan Peters getting that that you know spot in the bracket. But he is eight and six on the season, as you said, been uh, banged up, and and um, you know, Darren Cruz is is no stranger to wrestling those those big matches. Um, I, I think he does get on the the podium this year. He had some big wins. In fact, he beat Joey Dance from Virginia Tech, who is the second seed. He has a win over him this season. So obviously the the talent level's there for Darren Cruz and um you know he he's been he he has some down moments as well. He he lost to Nick Soriano earlier this year, uh, wasn't really close with him and um but he Soriano's another guy who's who's you know how do you how is he gonna be? Is he gonna be hundred percent? Uh, you know that ankle is probably gonna be bothering him a little bit, if not a lot. So um you know that's that's why it's March, right? Yeah, I honestly, my gut feeling, and I have no inside information on this, just from from what I saw, the comments yesterday out of Penn State, I don't think Soriano is going to be there. I know they said he's practicing, that he looked good, but, you know, it just didn't seem convincing to me. It seemed to me like they're really kind of nervous about what he's going to be and whether he's really going to be able to go full strength or not. And no matter who you have in the NCAA tournament, if you can't go full strength on that ankle it's going to be a really difficult time yeah and that would be man that would be a blow to to penn state if, if he can't go uh looking at some other guys in the bracket vito Pasone from appalachian state uh this guy was uh he's i feel like he's been around forever i feel like vito is just he's he's an <laughs> eighth year senior uh for for them but vito is a, a redshirt senior from el myers out in wilkes area um vito was a um a successful wrestler himself he was a, a state runner-up um when he was in high school and he actually opens up with the 14th seed but this is a guy he has a win over already the season yeah not even a close win a tech fall yeah he beat uh freddie rodriguez from southern illinois at uh edwardsville he beat him 22 7 um back in in the early part of the season in december um and that's his first round matchup so that, that i mean he has to feel pretty good about that knowing that he tech followed him uh a few months yeah, back. yeah you can't can't go into it any more confident than that uh, having a guy that you've already beaten by tech fall so i mean that sets up an interesting uh situation because i i don't if soriano doesn't go um you know this kyle does kyle atkins from buffalo get a a, a forfeit into into the um you know that that next round and then you know yeah then you have Pasone potentially yeah, into Pas- the uh, quarterfinals well, right that's i mean that's sort of what i'm looking at i mean if i mean again you have no inside source and um i i would be i unlike you i i, I think it's i think soriano is definitely going to go um I, I think he's going to try to go i just uh like i said and and i don't know maybe i'm i'm reading the the tea leaves wrong just from what i saw it, it was not really a yeah he looks great you know he's pushing off it well he's you know 75 percent 90 percent whatever kale just kind of said uh you know he's he's going he's good what do you want can you explain what that means reading the tea leaves well, I, i've never is that a johnstown thing you've, you've never heard that saying before uh, is that is that a johnstown it's thing? sort of a fortune telling thing uh, for, no i'm it's, not into it's, it's i make a language own, thing i make my own fortune so um yeah. <laughs> well the, I, i'm gonna read this tea leaf and say ethan uh Lezik from minnesota formerly of parkland I, I think he's gonna have a pretty good tournament what would you say i do as well yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm with you there. He's the sixth seed, and I've got him actually finishing fifth. Really? Yeah. Okay. So he, he's a redshirt sophomore last year. I'm sorry, two years ago in 2015, uh, he was an NCAA qualifier. He was third in the Big Tens. Guy's a multiple time PA state champion uh, out of Parkland. Just a, a, a hammer in high school. We never really knew how he was going to be. He was always a little undersized in high school. But I think he's really come on to his own, uh, maturing now, now in his third year at Minnesota um, with that sophomore eligibility. Uh, and he's had some big wins this year. Uh, in fact, he, he almost beat Thomas Gilman. In fact, he had him beat and then just he gave up a, a big lead. Yeah, he did. He's very tough on top. So, you know, that's kind of the reputation that the Pennsylvania has nationally is that that our guys are, are really good on top. And personally, I like that. You know, I, I like being able to to see our guys put put people on their back and, and put them away. You know, I was talking to a couple of coaches over the weekend at the state tournament, Eric, and, um, you know, I actually three of them said to me, we, we should just implement college rules because we were really upset. I don't know if you noticed this as well, but the, the out of bounds rules were terrible this year. I mean, it was just, it was absolutely uh, atrocious how the, the calls were being made. And, you know, every, you couldn't go two feet without stepping out of bounds. 
Um, so I, I said we need to implement the, the college out of bounds rules or at least get a bigger mat. Um, and, and that's, I understand the feeling there, but it's just not feasible in a lot of places. I'm in, I'm in small schools. I'm in small gyms and like the Thomas tournament in Bedford, great tournament, but they put three mats in the main gym and you've got a wall a foot outside of the out of bounds. There's no way you can put a, a bigger mat in there. Well, I, I'm just, I, I understand the, you know, implementing it is probably more difficult than actually, it's easy for me to say that here sitting down, but all I'm saying is at the state tournament, it was, it was horrendous the way that it was, it was being called. And, and, um, it's not, you know, the fault of the refs, but it's the fault that it just, all this, this edge wrestling and nothing would come of it. So regardless, I don't want to digress into that, but as you said, riding tough, a lot of coaches said to me, they wish that we would just have college rules in Pennsylvania because a lot of these guys are going to be preparing for college and wrestling, um, like getting riding time and, and things like that. So I just thought it was interesting that you said, you know, we are known as, as sort of tough on top. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and I agree with you. I, I love the college out of bounds rule and, you know, can't wait to, to get to take in some college action this weekend. The best of the best. All right, so 125, what are you saying? Two medalists here, Cruz and uh, I do. Lezak? Okay. I have Cruz third and Lezak fifth. All right, I, I'll take your word for it. Let, let's move up to 133 where uh, there's quite a, a stud at the top here, NATO, uh, Nate Tomasello from Ohio State, national champion, um, and, and he's undefeated this season. And off the bat, right from the start, he's going to have a, a, a Pennsylvania guy, Corbin Myers from Edinburgh, the former state champion out of Bullion Springs. And you, know, you can't really ask for a worse draw than that. No, that's a, <laughs> that's a pretty tough one. Corbin Myers, a, a good kid, good wrestler, but man, uh, getting NATO off the bat's pretty tough. Yeah. I mean, there's just, that, there's no other words to put it. I mean, that's just, that's just tough for a red, red shirt freshman in his first NCAA tournament. Uh, and, and you get a guy like NATO off the bat, but he's a guy who I think can, can bounce back and win a couple. I, I don't, I mean, I don't think he's going to get on the podium, but I think he is going to, um, he's not going to go out easily. That's for sure. Uh, a guy, a guy in this bracket that I like Scotty Parker, he's, he's been a little banged up this year. I mean, I saw him, uh, he was watching his, his younger brother, Matty Parker, uh, wrestle at Penridge his final year this year. And, uh, I got to see him at a few tournaments and he, he was a little, a little banged up and, um, I don't know how he is now, but he's comes in as a ninth seed. And, um, Scotty's a guy who really impressed me, uh, when they wrestled Penn state at the Bryce Jordan center. Um, he had a, a really tough win over Jared Cortez and, uh, really took it to him. And I thought, man, if he wrestles like this the rest of the season, he's, he's going to make some noise at the, uh, the big dance. He was an NCAA qualifier in 2015 redshirt last year. Um, and now he's a, a redshirt sophomore. So, but he, he's he's in a sort of a tough half of that bracket. He is, but I agree with you. I like him. Uh, I like what he's doing. I, I I have him finish an eighth, but, yeah, getting on the podium. I mean, you you don't have him getting past Zane Richards, do you? No, I don't. Okay, but you have him bouncing back. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because that's a tough – I mean, if he wins his first match over Colby Smith of Appalachian, he, he's – most likely going to get Zane Richards, who's just uh, a hammer, and he's he's in a tough position as well. Uh, looking at and and here's another one that I thought I, I just scratched my head at Connor Schramm from Stanford, who uh, he was the guy who knocked out Darren Cruz from the All American uh, finish down last season at 125 pounds. Connor Schramm is uh, now he started at 25 this year, moved up to 133 this year. He's a returning All American, but he's unseated. Uh, I believe he, yeah, he was one that got a wild card bid into the the national tournament. He's fourteen and four in the season. Is a uh, red shirt junior out of Cannon Mac. Yeah, that's a, as you said, a very tough draw getting Corey Clark, the number four seed, right off the bat. But whenever you're, I, I don't know. Do you know was he injured? Is that I assume so? If uh, if he's fourteen and four, that he's probably banged up, and and that was kind of why he's in the position that he is in. Yeah, I do believe that he he was banged up. I know there were some issues with going down to twenty five, and and you know he was always a big. I thought a bigger guy. Uh, to begin with, he was a four-time state finalist at, at Canamac. He was a two-time state champion, um, uh, just a really good kid. And, um, you know, I, I thought last year was he, he had it was some of the best wrestling he had of his, his career uh, it, up in Madison Square Garden. So I thought uh, this was obviously uh, another year for him to repeat that. But right off the bat, Corey Clark, two All-Americans going at it in the first round. So much like we saw with, with Darren Cruz, um, in his first round matchup, Connor Schramm's going to have his hands full. 
Yeah, that's, as you said, a, a very difficult one there. Uh, an interesting one to me is we get a couple of PA guys going at it in the first round as well, where you get Corey Keener of uh, Blue Mountain, who's now at uh, Central Michigan, taking on Dom Flores of Pitt. Yeah, this is one I circled right away because Corey Keener, he's he's always been uh, in and around. He's a two-time uh, national qualifier, so this is be his third trip to the NCAA. Uh, he was a two-time state champion for Blue Mountain out of District 11. He's a redshirt senior, so he's he's been around the block for for a while. He didn't have the the best of years. Um, you know, I, I can't imagine what your body has gone through when you're in your sixth year of college. Um, <laughs> I mean, I just can't. I really just cannot imagine how much that does to your body there's a daily grind for six years in a college room that's just incredible so you know I, I don't know if it's something where he's just he's getting burnt out but Corey's had a, a tough year he's 19 and 13 Dom Flores on the other hand um, as you said he's a junior he's a, uh, also a two-time NCAA qualifier um, out of North Allegheny he's, he's now wrestling at Pitt he's 19 and one on the season he was he was in and out of the lineup too um, but he comes in as, as a six seed yeah, that actually surprises me a little bit. Uh, seemed a little high to me that the six seed because he does have the nineteen and one record. But you look at the wins, and they don't necessarily stack up with a, a ton of big names in there. So uh, maybe a little bit of a good fortune there for one of our our Pennsylvania guys and Dom Flores. Yeah, but I mean that's not a, a easy match that first round against Corey. No, Keener. no, not at all. And Flores, I mean he battled tough last year at, at, in New York. I thought he was. You know, if he would have had a couple more uh, wins, he, he would have been on the podium. So, um, you know, that's that's one that I'm definitely going to watch because that's that's two Pennsylvania guys going going at it in the first round. Sort of that PA on PA crime really early on. Another guy, DJ Fellman from Lock Haven. Uh, this is a guy out of Warren Area High School. Um, DJ is making his first trip to the NCAA tournament. He's a redshirt freshman, and um, he's he's. You know, he, I'm sure he's happy to be there and have a good time. But you know, he's he's going to have tough sledding here with Brian Lantry from Buffalo in the first the first round. He's an 11 seed, 20 and five on the season. So, um, you know, he'll he'll get a taste of of the NCAA's pretty quick. He will, as will uh, Billy Rappo. The uh, talk about a guy that seems like he's been around for a while. Uh, well, Billy that's Rappo. just that's just because of the, you heard the name Rappos forever. I agree. You're probably right, but he's still a redshirt senior. Uh, Council Rock, the two time state champ, but he gets a tough draw as well. Uh, number two, Seth Gross in the first round. Yeah, and he had a a really good Big Ten tournament. Uh, he he really did. Uh, to earn the 12, right yeah. to to earn the right to to come to the NCAA's, it's his first. Oh, you mean Rappo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Rappo did. Rappo had a. Uh, no, I know Seth Gross did as well, but I'm saying Billy Rappo had a a great uh, Big Ten tournament to even make it to the NCAA's, where this is his first time qualifying here, uh, two time state champion, as you said, but never really was a huge factor on on the um, Maryland Terps, the, their team, uh, up until this year. He's he's you know been in the lineup throughout the last four years, but. Uh, like you said, Billy Rappo, he gets he gets a stud, Seth Gross, um, right off the bat, second seed, thirty one on the on the year from uh, South Dakota, and that's man, that's talk about a, a tough one there. Yeah, quite a quite a few PA guys here, uh, not not getting the draws that they wanted in in terms of those first round matchups. But as we said, it's the NCAA tournament. You're not going to get anything easy, so you got to go out there, do what you can, and you know if you fall into the the consolation round, just try to keep battling back. Yeah, and that's typically historically that's where Pennsylvania has earned their their rights to to call themselves the best because they have so many of these guys, like you said, Connor Schramm, Dom Forrest, Corey Keener. Billy Rappo, they're they're going to battle back. Some of them are going to battle back so far that they're going to you know finish top eight. So um, you know, while they may not all get far into the championship round and quarterfinals, but you know, don't don't mistake it that they're going to keep on coming at you in the wrestleback. So um, it, moving up to one forty one, just another weight where I'm thinking, man, they they really Pennsylvania sort of had a, a tough dr- tough draw all around here. Brock Zacharel from Clarion. Um, he, he's coming into his second NCAA tournament. He was a, an NCAA qualifier last year. He's a, a PA state champion out of Brookville in District 9. He's a redshirt sophomore. And he, man, you, you know, see who he gets in the first round, Eric? <laughs> yeah, top seed, Dean top Howell. Seed, yeah, right. So uh, that, that's a tough tough draw for, for Zach Rell, uh, one of the, the best wrestlers out of uh, the Brookville area in, in a while here. And um, he, he's, he's going to have his hands full, but he's another guy – be careful because he he could bounce back and beat a lot of these these uh you know heavier seated guys here at 141 would you agree 
I do agree. And there's so many Pennsylvania guys in here that I think you're going to end up seeing quite a few all uh, Keystone State matchups in this one. Okay, so Logan Everett from Army, he's he's also in the bracket. Um, Logan Everett from Williamson High School out of uh, District 4. He's a senior. He was a state, or I'm sorry, uh, an NCAA qualifier last season. He was a, a state medalist in his career. And um, he, he's coming in with a 21-14 and 14 record at 141 pounds. Yeah, and he's got a tough one, too. I know we keep saying this, that everything's tough in this, but Jaden Ironman as an eight seed is a pretty difficult matchup to uh, to face there in the first round. Yeah, Ironman's really uh, turned some heads this year for uh, for the Mizzou Tigers. He was able to, to get some, some wins under his belt and establish himself as one of the top wrestlers in the nation. So, yeah, tough, tough draw for Logan Everett. Luke Pletcher, a uh, guy who we're actually going to have on the podcast. Luke Pletcher is a, uh, a true freshman out of Latrobe, Pennsylvania. He was a four-time state finalist, three-time state champion. Now uh, at Ohio State University where he got thrust in the lineup uh, early after an injury um, up at 141. He was competing at 133 and 144, uh, 141 uh, when he was redshirting but got thrown in. And, you know, he's looked solid since, since being in the starting lap. He had a great Big Ten tournament. He did. He's been very impressive all season. As you said, not the biggest 41 pounder. He probably could have been a 33 pounder. Uh, you know, that was probably the, the hope there, but he's done a great job for him stepping in as a true freshman. Yeah. Really impressed with Luke and, and just the way he's adjusted. And uh, I'm, I'm curious to pick his brain about how hard it is to adjust from, I mean, I mean, it was last year at this time he was winning his third state title. I mean, this was, he was the reason why the, the bracket has been changed to now seeding because he and Sammy Sasso met in the quarterfinals. So that was just last year. And now here he is uh, in the NCAA tournament. And Oh, by the way, he's seeded number 12. So um, again, he had a great big 10 tournament. He did, and uh, he actually gets a pretty good matchup as far as it goes. Uh, He's got Salvatore Profaci of Michigan, who's only 13 and 15. Obviously, anybody in the Big Ten is is a pretty good opponent, but I like that first-round matchup. Good chance for for Pletcher to move on there and likely face Anthony Ashnault of Rutgers in the second round. Yeah, boy, and that's that's a tough one. So it may be an easy first round, but that's a tough second one if if he runs into Anthony Ashnault from Rutgers and uh, who's, who's... Pretty good at returning All-American himself. Another guy who I feel like we've been talking about for a number of years, and, and that's because he's, he's been around for a while, and that's Jimmy Goulibon. And my gosh, we, we, could, we could go on for hours about Jimmy Goulibon and, and his career and his trajectory. And I, I mean, I love the kid. Everyone I've talked to that, that's known him, that's coached him, says Jimmy is such a good kid. He's such a – and I, I remember him when he was a freshman and uh, seeing him at the Classic going around. And, you know, he was just 103 pounds and – um, you know, now here he is at, and, you know, his redshirt senior year at Penn State, and he's going to play a big factor in whether Penn State's able to, to retain that national championship. He is. He's to me, he's such a big wild card because as good as he was in high school, as consistent, it's really been kind of an up and down college career. And you just don't know which Jimmy you're going to get. You could get the one that, that went out and finished second in the Big Ten last year, or you can get the one that went out this year and went one and three and got pinned three times. So it's really difficult to tell. But man, if he puts it together, he could really play a key role for Penn State in this tournament. And I, he's got a matchup in the first round with uh, Javier Gasca of Michigan State, who Gasca beat him twice this year. He, he pinned him in the Big Ten tournament. But don't put it past Goulibon to come out here and get things going, beat Gasca, and, and move on to that second round. Yeah, I, I mean, if Jimmy shows up, the, the Jimmy that we know and love, if he shows up, he's winning that match. Um, I, I don't think that's a, a question um, whatsoever. He, he He's capable of winning this match. I mean, he had Dean Heil pinned. He had him... You know, looked sharp in that match, but um, you know, and I don't know how his his confidence level is. I know you you listened into the 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 um, press conference. The that, press conference, yeah. That Kale and, and Kale said. says it's good. Now Jimmy wasn't available for for comment, so we couldn't really get uh, his take on it. Kale says the confidence level is good. That's always a big thing with Jimmy. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't blame him for not you know whether he was unavailable or not. There's no way I'm letting Jimmy Goulbon talk to the media. I just get his head right, but. Jimmy, I mean, like you said, four-time state champion from Derry. He was a, 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 a national All-American, an NCAA All-American in 2015. He finished fifth. Uh, it, this is going to be his fourth trip to the, the NCAA, so he's been here now four times. He, he was 2-2 two and two last year. He had a good tournament last year um, for, for 
Penn State, but was unable to get onto the podium. So this is it. This is the last shot for Jimmy to, you know, secure his, his legacy. He can. And if he can make some noise, especially get a podium finish, that would really bring him around in the eyes of a lot of Penn State fans because that would go a long way towards putting Penn State in position for a sixth national title in the, the past seven years. Another uh, big tough one here is Randy Cruz, and Randy Cruz is a guy who beat Jimmy Goulbon earlier this season uh, in a dual meet. Randy Cruz, uh, this is a guy who's, I, I, you know, obviously he's been around for a while, redshirt senior out of Becca. He was a uh, state champion there, and um, he was a state runner-up, actually, to Jimmy Goulbon when they were in high school. He's 21-7 and seven on the season. He comes in as an 11th seed. Um, and this is actually a guy who was an NCAA All-American a season ago. You know, a lot of people expected his brother Darian to finish as a, an All-American, not necessarily Randy, but it's actually roles reversed last year. Randy was the All-American, Darren was not. So um, this year now he's coming in. You know, I, I think he has a favorable draw. Uh, he's at Cole Martin from Wisconsin in the first round, and I think he he could battle um, through into the quarterfinals. But Randy Cruz is, I mean, he's a dangerous wrestler. He is. I, I like his chances, as you said, of getting past that first one. Probably a tough matchup in the, the second round with George DiCamillo of uh, Virginia, but uh, certainly a winnable first round matchup there. And as you said, he's a dangerous guy to wrestle and probably not anybody really wants to see him in that bracket. No, I mean, he can scramble like none other. My gosh. I mean, he's just he's, he's gotten so much better at that than he has in high school. And um, I mean, this is his fourth trip to nationals. So he's no no stranger to this environment. Uh, this will be his fourth time coming. He was three and two in 2015. Um, as I said, he was a, an All-American last year, finishing eighth. Um, but I, I think Randy's another one that is, is, is poised for a uh, podium finish here for the second year in a row. It's possible uh, in my bracket, which by no means do I saying that it's it's going to be correct. But I've got Pletcher as the the lone PA guy here getting on the podium, uh, just because there's so much talent in this weight with Dean Heil and Joey McKenna and Kevin Jack and Anthony Ashnall, Bryce Matthew Meredith. Logic. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a guy that uh, was an NCAA you know, was a returning runner. All American. He's a ten seed yeah. or returning national finalist. Yeah, he was a finalist last year. That's crazy. But I mean, he, yeah, it's a tough weight. I mean, this is a really deep weight class. When you look at it from uh, an overall standpoint, um, Tyler Smith from Bucknell, he comes in as the 15th seed um, at 141 pounds. Tyler Smith is a junior now. Uh, he was a two time national qualifier, so he'll be making his third trip to the NCAA tournament. Three time state medalist. He was a one time state champion. Uh, you'll remember his senior year, Cam Coy, the freshman, knocked him out in the regional finals, and, and now Cam's a senior, and, and Tyler's uh, making his third trip to the NCAA. So uh, love seeing this this Pennsylvania tradition go on. But Tyler, he's uh, sort of in a, I guess you would say, a decent part of the bracket would you <laughs> uh he is for the first round yeah i mean for when the first round, russell, but... russell rolfing from uh, cal state bakersfield that's the good news the bad news you win that you're probably getting kevin jack uh of north carolina state in the second round the number two seed yeah but just advancing into getting that win in the first round sets you up a lot better than it would dropping that first match and coming back um you know, I just think it's uh, it mentally, I mean, winning that first match and having the chance to battle a guy like Kevin Jack is is probably good for you. Um, but, yeah, he, he, he is going to have a, a tough, tough match if he wins that first match. But Kevin Jack's going to have a, a Pennsylvania guy in the first round. He's going to have Ronnie Perry from Lock Haven, the former Solanco wrestler, who is a, a PIAA state medalist. He's a redshirt junior. And uh, I believe this is his first trip to the, the national tournament. Nice season out of Ronnie Perry, 28 and six, getting to the national tournament. Uh, not going to write him off, obviously, but uh, as we said, getting Kevin Jack in the first round is a, a pretty difficult assignment. See how that goes and probably have to bounce back after that and, and try to win a, a couple matches. Well, moving up to 149, it gets a little bit better for Pennsylvania wrestling because that, that name is Zane Rutherford. And, and Zane, uh, he, he's just keep on doing what Zane's doing. The train is just keep on chugging along. And my gosh, he's just, I mean, how impressive was he last year? Yeah, he's been unbelievable throughout his career, really taking a, a, a giant step forward last year as you said but uh <laughs> even here we get a, a pennsylvania guy's the number one seed and he still gets a pennsylvania guy in the first round so right, yeah it seems like a, a pennsylvania guy's getting the number one or two seed in every weight here so far yeah it's it's unfortunate they they have to try to hold us down you know they, they give us an unfair <laughs> advantage no it's i mean when you have 49 guys when you have the 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 most 
number of, uh, of uh, national qualifiers in all the states, um, you're obviously going to have a lot of that PA on PA crime early on. But he has Josh Maruka from Arizona State, who's a redshirt freshman, uh, four-time state medalist, uh, state runner-up his senior year at Franklin Regional High School. And, and Maruka's had a, a very good year for himself at 149 pounds, he and Josh Shields. Uh, he's 21 and 8 on the season, but as you said, he runs into to a fellow Keystone State stud, and that's Zane Rutherford, who uh, is a returning national champion, um, still undefeated. But you know, he was tested this year. I mean, he, I mean, Sorensen had him very, very tight, um, and, and you know, Kalika as well. He, I mean, they all wrestled him tough, and it wasn't the the normal Zane that we we've seen before, uh, a guy that he majored in the national finals last year. You're right. I mean, those were two close ones, but everything else aside from those two almost was, uh, I think everything besides those two was a bonus point match. Uh, so you're right. He, he's been tested, you know, Sorensen stuck with him there. Kalika did as well, but I'll still take my chances with Zane putting up bonus points in most of these matches. Yeah. I mean, obviously I, I do as well, but, uh, it, it's just, just food for thought there. Eric. Um, we actually have a guy in the pigtail rounds uh, at 149 pounds, and that's Kyle Shoup from Lock Haven, formerly of Bullion Springs. This guy was a, a multiple-time state medalist for the Bubblers. Uh, Kyle Shoup is a redshirt freshman, um, and he's 38 and 15 on the season. And he's going to have Nick Barber from Eastern Michigan in the first round in the pigtail round, who's 16 and 12 on the season. So, you know, Shoup could have a, a, a date in with uh, number 16, Jordan uh, Lester from, from Princeton, if he wins his pigtail round. He could. I, I like him there. Uh, I, I believe I saw that he actually has the most victories going into the tournament. Now with 15 losses, uh, it's not quite the, the record you want to see. But uh, he's, you know, he's a young guy getting all the experience he can, going to a lot of tournaments, going to some opens, getting some different things in. So great year for him. Uh, you know, great to get to the the national tournament here, get his feet wet, see how things go. And I, I think he can win that pigtail and get in there with uh, Laster. Yeah, Shoup is a guy. I mean, a lot of people had this as, you know, Patrick Dugan when he transferred in. They all just assumed that this was going to be his spot. And uh, Shoup really, I mean, he, he wrestled well the opening round of the, the season. Um, as you said, he, I feel like he was at every single open tournament uh, there was. I think he wrestled two tournaments one day uh, because, <laughs> I mean, he had so many wins and so many matches under his belt. But um, looking at some other names, guy who i've been big on for uh for most of his career and that's solomon chisco from virginia tech the former uh two-time state champion at, out of canon mac this guy's a redshirt sophomore last year he was an all-american in his freshman campaign uh he finished sixth at 141 pounds but he makes that move up to 149 in 2017 yeah, he's he's in a good position here. He's got Coleman Hammond of Cal State Bakersfield in the first round. I think that's a winnable one. And then as the sixth seed, he'll most likely get Davian Jeffries out of Oklahoma. And I think that's a, a doable one as well, which would, would put him into the quarters and in pretty good shape to, to get an All-American finish. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not looking past Coleman Hammond. He's he's a guy who's, yeah, although he's 18 and 6 on the season, he's you know he's had uh, some success before. And, and I, I wouldn't put... Uh, Joey Delgado from Morgan State past Davion Jeffries. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't look past either one of those either. So uh, Chisco, yeah, I think he just gets the job done. He's very consistent. Uh, I wasn't surprised last year when he was a uh, NCAA All-American in his first time there. No, I wasn't either. Uh, really solid kid, as you said, and, and I like his chances again this year. Another guy, a guy who actually wrestled Solomon Chisco and beat him in high school, and that's Matt Samato from Drexel. Uh, Samato is a, a senior, a uh, redshirt senior, I believe, from uh, he's out of LaSalle in District 12. And uh, Samato is making his third trip to the NCAAs. Um, he, he's a, just a, a phenomenal wrestler for, for Drexel. He's feel like he's, he's done a lot in his career. Um, again, a two time state medalist. And but he has a tough draw. He is the seventh seed, Max Thompson um, from uh, northern Iowa. He does. Thompson's just a freshman, but very good. Uh, he actually, one of his losses, he's 27 and five. One of his losses was the Solomon Chisco, but he's been really solid this year. Uh, and, and as you said, that's a pretty tough draw for Samato in the first round. Yeah. And these two met at the, the scuffle actually with, uh, Thompson coming away with a five, two win over Samato. But, um, you know, he's obviously incapable of knocking him off. 
Um, it just depends on, on what one shows up. But Samato is definitely capable of knocking, this, knocking Thompson off, who is only a freshman, as you said. Yeah, and then we uh, we got another seated wrestler from Pennsylvania. At number 10 is Lake Gardner from Biglerville. Yeah, Lake Gardner's. I feel again, feel like he's been there forever. He's a redshirt senior um, from from Lehigh. He was a, a two-time state medalist from Biglerville. He's making his third trip to the NCAA tournament. Really consistent, really th- solid throughout his career at Lehigh. Um, always battling uh, with some of this, this toughest competition in the nation. And he's a ten seed, and he gets Zach Hall from Michigan in that first round, who's seventeen and ten on the season. Yeah, so you know, not a. a bad draw there probably about what you'd expect out of a 10 seed i mean uh hall's hall's pretty solid so that's probably a, a toss-up match there but you know if, if you're like garden you gotta like your chances going into it right below him is going to be a, a guy from uh, virginia sammy crevis who was a two-time state champion out of hemfield area in district seven and sammy crevis um he's 23 and 12 on the season definitely took some some bumps and bruises this year at 149 pounds but um nonetheless he makes his way to the ncaa tournaments his first time here he's a redshirt freshman um and, and he's got i think a, a a decent matchup with the 15th seed kenny thurbold from rutgers who's 22 and 9 on the season he does but i mean if you've got a 22 and 9 record in the big 10 that's that's saying something so not a not an easy matchup but you know one that uh the crevis uh has a shot at yeah, I, I agree with you there with a guy who, uh, like Therabald, who's, who's 22 and 9 in the Big Ten. He's obviously doing something right um, out of Rutgers. So, like, like we talked about at 149, 157, just another hammer here for Pennsylvania. That's Jason Nolf, um, the Matrix, who just is, is just dominating everybody he wrestles, um, has to be the most dominant wrestler uh, in, in the nation. Um, if, if you ask me, I don't know. I think Gabe Dean and, and Kyle Snyder obviously have something to say about that. But Jason Nolf, 22-0 and on the season. Uh, as a returning net, uh, NCAA runner-up last year. He lost to Imar in that, that, that crazy match. Um, three-time Pennsylvania State champion. Just just a hammer here. Uh, one of the, the solid points here for Penn State and Pennsylvania. Yeah, and for once, uh, nobody from Pennsylvania gets that number one seed, uh, no, doesn't have to face them. So you got Nolf at, at number one. And yeah, after last year, you know, phenomenal performance, a couple losses to uh, Martinez that, you know, after he'd beaten him once already. But certainly now that Martinez has moved up to 165, this really looks like Nolf's weight class to, to win. Yeah, I agree. I don't. I don't think anyone's expecting anything other than a, a Jason Nolf championship here. Um, very, very good guy. Very uh, solid performer, and um, you know he's just he just gets the job done. He's he's a lot of fun to watch too. Um, he is absolutely. So Pennsylvania has uh, another guy in the pigtail round here, and that's Colt Shorts from Cal Poly. Uh, he's a redshirt junior, all the way from Cannon Mac. So uh, the Cannon Big Mac here. He went all the way out to California for his college career. He's twenty and twelve in the season. He's, a, as I said, a redshirt junior. He was a two-time state medalist in Pennsylvania, um, but he's able to squeak in and make an appearance at the NCAAs. And uh, in the pigtail round, he's going to have Bryant Clagan from Ryder, who's 22-5 and five on the season. Yeah, that's not too bad of a matchup. I mean, Clagan is a is a good wrestler, obviously at twenty two and five. But it's you know if you're coming in at twenty and twelve. That's not a bad first round matchup, or in this case, a pigtail matchup to uh, to get into the tournament. But if he would win that, he'd run into AC Jake Short from Minnesota, who's uh, twenty three and twelve in the season, but has has a lot of big wins under his belt. Um, another Pennsylvania guy who I've been pretty impressed with throughout the season, and and he's got to have some of the the highest wins here, thirty two and seven. That's Josh Shields from Arizona State, the former Franklin Regional Panther. He was a, a state champion his his senior year, four time state medalist uh, for the Panthers out of Franklin Regional, and Shields come in as the ninth seed. Uh, where he's going to have Jake Faust from Duke right off the bat, who's nine and seven on the season. Yeah, as you said, Josh Shields coming in. Uh, he and and Maruka have both done well out there. You know, the desert treating them well and really doing a lot to turn that program around and and make it into a powerhouse. Now, the only other Pennsylvania guy here uh, is Michael Kemmer from from Iowa. So we got two Frank and Regional studs here, uh, Michael Kemmer and Josh Shields, teammates since they were. Uh, knee high to a grasshopper but uh, Kemmer comes in 27 and 2 
And by the way, his only two losses are to Jason Nolf, his former training partner at Young Guns. And don't be surprised if you get a third uh, round of this one of, of Nolf Kemmer. Yeah, I, I just love Mikey Kemmer. I mean, such a good guy on and off the mat. I mean, just I, I can't say enough good things about him um, and just the person he is. And I I think so much of, of that is, you know, I can see Jody Strip Matter and, and Mikey uh, every time I talk to him, just a, a really good, good person. Um, so Mikey's got, a, a, he's a second seed. So he, he's obviously in a good position. Uh, he has Jake Danishek from Indiana in the first round, who's 19 and 13. So uh, I, I agree with you, Eric. I, I think he's got a clear shot to the, the finals. Yeah, I mean it's it's not going to be easy by any means. I mean nothing, as we keep saying, nothing in this this tournament is. You know, you've got uh, Joey Lavalley from uh, Missouri to go through, uh, possibly uh, Russell, Russell Parsons. Yeah, uh, I mean it, it could be a, a difficult path, but I like Kemmerer's chances of getting there, and I really like the chance of of three Pennsylvania guys getting on the podium here with Nolf, Kemmerer, and Shields. You think Shields can squeak on? I think he can. I can. I mean as Coming out of the ninth seed, that certainly wouldn't be a shock. No, I, I agree with you. I mean, it's definitely definitely a possibility. Um, so 57s, I mean, that could be an all Pennsylvania final uh, if everything goes right. 165, a little bit, a little bit similar in the sense that we could have a, a couple medalists. But uh, Cole Walter is the first guy that you'll see on the bracket from Lehigh, the redshirt senior, or I'm sorry, redshirt freshman here. Um, and, and he's here because Mitch Minotti uh, is not the uh, three-time NCAA uh, national All-American. Is is not here, but Cole Walter from Lehigh, nineteen and nine on the season, and he's got a, a, this is again PA on PA crime right off the bat, and that's Austin Matthews from Edinburgh, uh, the former Reynolds star. Uh, Cole Walter and Austin Matthews, two state champions in Dubway, are going to be going at it in the first round. Yeah, I think this will be a fun one, uh, certainly for PA fans to see these two go at it. Austin Matthews, as you said, uh, eighteen and seven at Edinburgh. Uh, nice season out of him after uh, he had spent a season at Clarion and is is really coming to his own at, at Edinburgh as a college wrestler. He was obviously a very talented high school guy, four time medalist and uh, twenty fourteen champion in double A. But yeah, this should be a fun one. I, I look forward to this one. Yeah, me too. Just a lot of talent here. And Cole Walters, uh, I, I thought his senior year of high school, I mean, he was a four-time state medalist as well and um, 2015 state champ. So he, he's, he's you know accustomed to having success on the mat. So really good opening round matchup. Unfortunately, it's between two Pennsylvania wrestlers, and one of them is going to have to drop down. But uh, a freshman that I, I have been high on, and that's uh, Chenzo Joseph out of uh, Pittsburgh Central Catholic, who's now at Penn State. He's a redshirt freshman. And uh, Vincenzo's had a, a really good year. He had a really good Big Ten tournament. He did, but the really interesting thing about this is, as you said, he's had an excellent year. The one hiccup that he had was very early in the season against Keaton Subject of Stanford. And guess who he gets in the first round? Yeah, I, I remember that bout uh, very good. And that's that's one where Chenzo almost came back. I, what was it, like 12-9, I think was the Yeah, first. he fell behind really big early on. Yeah, so and, and came back and lost eighteen twelve. Eighteen twelve. I mean, that was that was crazy. I feel like that was a long time ago. That was on uh, November thirteenth. So that was that was his first dual meet for Penn State, I believe. Yeah, I think you're right. A uh, long time ago, and obviously everything we've seen since then shows that that was that was probably the uh, the anomaly there. That he's certainly in a position where you like him this time around to to win that one and, and quite a few more matches. Yeah, I mean, you look at the top four seeded guys are all out of Big Ten, and, and Chenzo had a, a big win over Isaac Jordan uh, in that third-place match at the Big Ten tournament, and, um, you know, two of his losses are to, to Imar. So Chenzo's, like you said, he's going to have a chance at revenge, but that's also a chance for, for Subject to say that wasn't a fluke and, and knock him off. So, you know, as soon as I saw that bracket, I thought, man, really? Are you kidding me? Because, I mean, that, <laughs> that's the one loss that, that Vincenzo will tell you about that um, I should not have taken that loss. Um, but, again, he has a chance to, to put that behind him and, and get that win against him. So um, another guy here that, that I like, and that's uh, Tashawn Campbell from Pitt. Uh, he comes out. Uh, this is his second trip to the NCAA tournament. Last year he was up at one six or one seventy four. This year he's down to one sixty five. He's twenty and two on the season. He was an ACC champion and he's the tenth seed. 
these pick guys have really been wrestling well of late, uh, close the season pretty strong. Obviously, uh, uh, some turmoil during the season, a coaching change, all that, but they seem like they, they really kind of got things rolling at the, the end of the season. So it'll be interesting to see if they can continue that going into the NCAA tournament. Now, who does he have in the first round, Eric? I'm going to make you pronounce that. <laughs> I'm going to go with Yoance Mejias of Oklahoma. Okay. Yoan, uh, I'm not going to try it. <laughs> he's, he's, 10, he's 10 and 7 on the season, so if he would get by him, uh, he's likely to get Anthony Valencia from Arizona State, uh, the stud redshirt freshman who's 32 and 5 on the season. So, But, but Campbell's uh, – he's – He's a guy who I think is is not necessarily unknown, but um, you know he could do. Re- I could see him doing really well at this tournament. Um, it just depends on what what Campbell shows up. Um, but I think he's a, a guy that um, has had success throughout the year. Obviously, he's twenty and two. Um, so, and I thought last year wrestling up at one seventy four, he he looked good. He was in on some shots, just had some things that he needed to uh, clean up a little bit. And this is a guy who uh, was a state champion from Penn Hills uh, a couple years back. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, as you said, I, I have him get into Valencia there, and I don't know. I'm not I'm not confident that Valencia beats him there. I think that one's kind of a toss up match. So Campbell could very easily be into the quarters. So moving up to 174, a uh, couple big names from from Pennsylvania. Uh, the first guy you'll see on the bracket is Ty Shawsall from uh, Edinburgh, who was a uh, two time state medalist out of Tri Valley, um, and he'll be making his first trip to the NCAA tournament, and uh, he, he's got a, a pretty, I mean, not a good matchup uh, by any stretch of the imagination with uh, Miles uh, Amin from Michigan. No, but it's not too bad. Uh, Amin beat him 9-7 earlier in the season, so it's it's certainly a match that uh, he was in and could possibly turn around this time. Yeah, that was a match he lost on uh, December 2nd, 9-7 to, to Amin. So definitely a match that he can turn around. The next guy that you're going to see is Casey Kent from Penn, who last year just turned so many heads, uh, was definitely one of the most impressive wrestlers um, of the, the tournament last year in, in New York City. Casey came away with a fourth-place finish at 174 pounds to earn his first All-American um, honors and uh, Casey returns back this season to 174 pounds. He's 22 and six on the season, uh, but he is a 12th seed. He is, and he does not get an easy draw. Jaden Bernstein from Navy was another one of those guys that really turned heads last year. If you remember, he knocked off number four, Ethan Ramos of North Carolina, and won his first two bouts at the NCAA tournament, ended up losing to Nathan Jackson and suffering a head injury that knocked him out of the tournament. But that's a pretty difficult first-round matchup for a seeded guy. Yeah, and Kent beat him one nothing. He beat Bernstein on March 3rd, so uh, just uh, a little bit over two weeks ago, he, he wrestled him and only beat him one nothing. So definitely for a seated wrestler, returning All-American, tough draw for, for Kent, but uh, he, he's no stranger to, to t- facing those, those tough guys. Another guy in this bracket who I thought has had a, a, an amazing year for himself, um, and that's, that's Ryan Presh from, from Lehigh. The uh, former Milton area wrestler was a, a two-time state medalist. He was third both years, uh, his junior and senior year at Milton High School. And and Ryan's just, I mean, he's done a lot. Of, he's knocked off some big names this year, and um, he, he's, he's done pretty well for himself at 174 pounds. Uh, last year he was an NCAA qualifier where he went one and two. Yeah, Preish has has done well, as you said, but he's actually got a guy that, that handed him one of his four losses this season. And, and uh, Jordan Dano of Rutgers beat him ten to four uh, back on February seventeenth. So again, even though he's the sixth seed, not an easy draw. Yeah, and I, I didn't realize that that he he had lost. To, that was one of his four losses. I know he had. I mean, he he beat Zach Epperly. That's Zach Epperly's only losses is, is that to uh, Ryan Presh. But um, yeah, I didn't I didn't realize that, and that's that's a tough. Yeah, that's a tough draw for him, even though he's a sixth seed, having a guy in the first round that you lost to. I mean, I guess it gives him that added motivation to, to uh, you know, turn the tables on him. But still to lose to him 10-4, um, you know, a month ago, almost exactly a month ago, you know, that, that's, that's a tough thing to come back from. It is, but I like the way that Price has been wrestling. I like, uh, like his chances of, of getting that revenge factor here. Moving up to 184 pounds. Uh, definitely some some names that I think have a, a chance to to do well, 
But the first guy you're going to see on the bracket, and that's uh, Alex Deshantis from Drexel. Uh, DeCantis, I'm sorry, from, from Drexel, uh, former North Allegheny wrestler. And um, he was a state medalist when he was is there at North Allegheny. He is now uh, at Drexel where he's be making his first trip to the NCAA tournament. Um, and he's, he's a redshirt junior. He is. Nice season out of him, 21 and 12. Gets him to the NCAA tournament. Not a great draw. You get Nathan Jackson of Indiana in the first round there, who's the nine seed. So kind of a difficult one. But, uh, again, you know, impressive that uh, that he's able to get to the NCAA tournament. And, you know, you never know what can happen there. Uh, a guy at this bracket that I, I really like, and I think he's poised for a big tournament, and that's Zach Savotsky from Virginia Tech. Uh, the former Greater Latrobe wrestler who was a state champion his uh, senior year. Zach was two and two last year at the NCAA's, and he he was he was very very close to earning All American honors. Uh, just had a, a tough draw a little bit, and now he's the fifth seed, twenty four and two on the season. Has a win over Miles Martin this year, uh, returning national champion. So I like Zach in this position. Uh, he's a redshirt sophomore, and, and as I said, uh, really close last year to earning that All American honors. Yeah, twenty four and two this season. Uh, as you said, gets the number five seed, Joe Hayob from uh, Penn. I like the matchup there. I think Zavatsky is definitely poised to get on the podium this year. Dakota Gear from Edinburgh. This guy is a, a true freshman. Um, heartbroken last year in the state tournament, he was the number one guy in the nation, um, and he lost to Garrett Hoffman who is the older brother, Gavin Hoffman, who, by the way, Garrett Hoffman's in this bracket as well, <laughs> which is the craziest thing in the world. I hope they wrestle. Um, but Dakota Gear from Edinburgh, uh, definitely a guy who, who was, was disappointed last year, finishing third in the state when he was number one in the nation. He was a, a 2015 state champion. But, but Gear's had a, a really solid year uh, in his first year of college wrestling um, for, for Edinburgh, and he's 29-8 and eight on the season. He, which earns him the 14th seed here at 184 pounds. So, uh, you know, I, I don't, the sky's the limits for him. I don't know what I don't know what he's going to end up doing here. Um, he's got Zach Nevels from Stanford uh, right out, right out of the gate, who's only six and nine on the season. But uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know how he's going to do. I, I like him. I, I certainly think he gets that first round win. Gets a little more difficult after that. Obviously, you get Sammy Brooks probably from Iowa. But uh, as you said, great freshman year out of Dakota Gear, and I, I think he's certainly going to be in the mix for a medal here. I'm not sure if, if he gets it this year. You know, probably need to spring an upset or two as the 14th seed. But uh, you know, it, it's been fantastic so far, and I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah, so the guy who upset Gear last year in the, the state tournament was Garrett Hoffman um, from Montoursville, who's now at Bucknell. He's also a true freshman. He's 18 and 14 on the season. Uh, Garrett ended up being a, a state runner-up last year, losing to, to Greg Balsack in the finals. But uh, Hoffman has eight. He's Like I said, he's 18 and 14 on the season. I believe it was a wild card to get in here. Um, he obviously has a tough draw. He's a six-seed Miles Martin who uh, was a, a Big Ten runner-up a week ago and was also the national champion last year. Um, and he, he's, you know, I, he did it, what, from the 12th seed position last year to win an NCAA tournament? Um, he's a 6th seed this year, so he got to like his chances. Yeah, I... <laughs> I, I don't know. You, you don't ask me about Miles Martin because I can't figure him out. I said after last year that that he'd never beat no, Bo Nickel again, and Nickel beats him, you know, in the dual meet, and then goes and loses to him again at the Big Ten. So I don't know. I'm I'm not the the guy to ask about Miles Martin. I guess. Well, I I don't think anyone is really because I mean it just doesn't. <laughs> it, you just can't tell. I mean, Bo looks so good against him in the dual meet, and then just uh, just bad uh, in the Big Tens. Um, but Martin, I, I give him credit because he, he had a game plan and he did really well for himself um, in, in the Big Ten tournament. He did end up. He getting, did. But then he goes and gets pounded by, by Sammy, Sammy Brooks Bro in the finals. Right. Yeah, I know. I know. It's 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 a crazy world, Eric, what we live in. <laughs> um, so a 184, I definitely like Zavatsi getting on the podium here. Um, and I, I think gear has a, a, a outside shot. But uh, Zavatsky, I think, is poised to get on that that podium. Um, but unfortunately, he may be the only one from Pennsylvania. That's such a deep weight class. I mean, we didn't talk about the top top end of it, but you've got Gabe Dean, you've got Bo Nickel, you've got Sammy Brooks. Oh yeah, returning national champion Miles Martin. I mean, what a great TJ, weight class. This, TJ Dudley. This, 
Yeah, th- this is probably the toughest weight class there is. Yeah, I would say uh, when just pure caliber of wrestlers, yeah, that's it's a really, really tough weight class. So um, for anyone to, you know, for Zavatsky to get on here, he's going to have a, a hard time, but he has that win over Miles Martin. I think obviously he's he's capable of doing it. But like I said, unfortunately, he, he might be the only one. Uh, if we move up to 197, the first guy that you're going to see is a guy I forgot to to add on when we had the uh, when we first got the initial list because I wasn't expecting him to be all the way up at 197. Last I saw, he was a 174 pounder. Jarek Kasunik from American, who's 24 and 10 on the season, and uh, this is a guy who I, I thought was a 74 pounder, but um, I guess he he grew a little bit over in the off season because he's a, a 197 pounder now. He's a he's a junior uh, from American. And he's 24 and 10 on the season. He was a three-time state medalist when he was at Benton Area High School. So uh, he, he's got his hands full in the first one, though. And I think he was a 160-pounder senior here at Benton. So, yeah, definitely putting on some weight there. But you're right. Uh, it, it doesn't get much more difficult than this when you got Jaden Cox in the first round. Yeah, it doesn't get much harder than that Run into two-time national champion Jaden Cox, who, oh, by the way, also went down to Rio over the summer and came away with some Olympic hardware. So, uh, yeah, really, really, really tough draw for him. Uh, but a guy who I think's in a good posi- position, and that's Matt McCutcheon from Penn State. He is. Matt McCutcheon, uh, he's been there a couple times before, went 2-2 two and two, uh, his uh, two years ago. But last year really struggled. If you remember, he had the knee injury last year, didn't look quite like himself, and, and struggled at the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and, and McCutcheon's really opened up his offense a little bit this year. I, I We saw him in that Oklahoma State duel really turn it on um, and, and really get to his shots and trust his his offense. Um, and I think that's what he's going to have to do in order to, to get on the podium and break through and get over that hump. I remember when he wrestled Kenny Quartz from Ohio State a couple years back, and, and he nearly beat him, uh, which would have put him into the All-American round. So, um, yeah, McCutcheon's going to have uh, – Christian Bruner from Purdue uh, in his first match, but I, I like his chances of getting through here and, and possibly seeing Jaden Cox. Yeah, uh, it, it, it probably going to end up with a four or five matchup with Jared Hot from Virginia Tech. Uh, that one might be be pretty difficult, but certainly a, in a good position to be in the quarters and and getting close to that medal round uh, status, which I, I think he gets it done this year and, and gets on the podium. Moving down the bracket at uh, the 13th seed, Tom Slay from Bucknell, the former Dubois area stud. Uh, he, he's he's been pretty consistent for the Bucknell Bison. He's a junior now, um, and he was uh, third actually in the state, both uh, in 2013 and 2014. Um, so I, I like I like Tom, and I, I think he has a good chance to to make some noise. Yeah, he's 31 and 5 this year. Two-time NCAA qualifier. Went 2 and 2 last year. Uh he, he certainly looks like a guy coming out of the 13 seed that that can he's got Cash Wilkie of Iowa, which it, it, you know, anytime you got an Iowa guy, especially in a Midwest uh, NCAA tournament, seems to be a difficult draw, but uh, I like his chances of of getting past Wilkie there and then facing Hot and and seeing what he can do there. And then the other guy who stands out on this bracket and uh, really tough seed for him or draw for him because he's not seeded, and that's Brent Harner from uh, Princeton, the former Norristown area wrestler, and he was an All-American last year. He was. We had him on the show earlier this year, talked to him. Uh, great, great guy. You know, very well spoken, as you would expect a, a Princeton man to be. And uh, as you said, tough year for him. He's only 14 and 8. Uh, but, you know, don't put anything past him. You, you saw last year what he can do. And he, his first round matchup is number seven, Aaron Studebaker, which sounds like a pretty tough matchup. And it is. But he only lost to him two to one in tiebreaker at, back in December. So this is a match that that Harner could win and put him himself in, in a pretty good position. Yeah, I mean, that was back in December 3rd and, and he lost two one in tiebreaker. So he obviously is right there with him, um, even though he is in, in the unseated position. I definitely think we could see him sneak through, and, and he had a really good run last year, so there's no reason to think he can't do it and end his career on a high note. So, like, keeping with the theme here, uh, let's just go up to 285, and does it get any harder than being uh, the first-round matchup to a guy by the name of Kyle Snyder um, from Ohio State? Probably not. I've heard of him before. 
<laughs> so Jake, I'm sure Jake Gunning has as well. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So Jake Gunning from Buffalo uh, is 20 and five on the season, and uh, yeah, I feel I just kind of feel bad for him. Yeah, it's like, hey, here's you got a 20 and five record, great season, way to go. You're going to nationals, and you get Kyle Snyder in the first round. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. Uh, he he was third in the state in 2014 back at Liberty from District 11. Uh, he, he's the older brother of Andrew Gunning, who was a state champion last year um, from Liberty, who's now at uh, North Carolina. But uh, Jake is is a redshirt sophomore, and uh, yeah, he's he's going to have to bounce back from that that Kyle Snyder match because it's it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be a rough one. Yeah, that's uh, as you said when when you're talking about an Olympic gold medalist and a world champ, it it doesn't get any harder than that in an NCAA tournament. The next guy you're going to see from Pennsylvania on the podium is a guy whose name is uh, etched in the history books from Pennsylvania. That's Thomas Haynes from Lock Haven, the the former Ohio State wrestler um, out of Solanco in District 3. Um, Thomas Haynes is 31-5 and on the season, really his first full season of, of college action here. Yeah, well, and, and for good reason. He was stuck behind Kyle Snyder at Ohio State. Yeah, right. You're you're absolutely right. The the four time state champ uh, out of Lock Haven gets the 14th seed, and uh, he is a guy in, in the first round that he beat eight one back in November. Yeah, he's got Yusuf uh, Hamida from Maryland, and I, I as you said, an eight one victory. You like his chances here of of getting that victory again and moving on. Yeah, I mean, here's a guy who was highly recruited out of high school. Um, you know, he moves up to, to heavyweight his senior year to get the taste of, of wrestling those bigger bodies. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him uh, for the first time in my uh, watching him in a Lock Haven uniform. But um, I'm really excited because, you know, he's, he's shown so much promise uh, throughout his career. So I'd really like to see him do well. Um, a couple other uh, guys here and, and one from District 3, and that's Joey Goodhart from Drexel. Uh, the former Hempfield wrestler is is twenty four and eight on the season, and uh, Goodhart, who's who's making a return trip to the NCAA tournament, uh, was a, he's a junior now from from Drexel, and uh, he is a guy in the first round that he's faced before as well. Yeah, he's got Nathan Butler, who he beat uh, four to three in tiebreaker two uh, back in January. So a pretty good first round matchup for him there. Moving down the bracket, Ryan Solomon from Pitt. Uh, a guy who, who's who's been around for quite some time. Uh, Solomon was a two-time state champion out of the Milton area, and um, the Pitt Panther is seventeen and four in the season. He's the fifteenth seed, so he's on the bottom half. Uh, he he has a, I mean, in my opinion, he has a tough draw. You know what? I actually really like this for Solomon. Uh, he, he's got uh, Ross Larson from Oklahoma, which I think is a winnable one. And then you figure, okay, he's probably not going to beat Connor Medbury from Wisconsin. That's a pretty tough ask. But the the way I have him dropping down, he gets a couple wins in the uh, the consolation bracket, and then he gets uh, number three seed or number four seed possibly uh, Jacob Casper of Duke, which doesn't sound like a, a good thing. Casper's twenty-seven and three, and put up a ton of points this year but one of those losses was to ryan solomon and one of them was a uh, i think a one point victory over solomon so solomon has kind of figured out casper's style how to slow him down how to keep it a close match and, and try to win it at the end so i really like solomon's chances here and i have him upset in casper there and and going on to get on the podium you're not i mean that's not because he's from Pitt, is it it, it's not there's no bias here i actually oh, yeah. i've picked some pit guys to not do as well as their seeds. Wait. so well, well this is uh this is one that i have as an upset boy we've been talking a lot about bias at, here at pa power wrestling the last <laughs> uh three days uh it's it's uh, it's a word I'm, I'm kind of sick of hearing and saying so uh i'm not gonna i'm not gonna harp too much on that but We'll, we'll just put that subject to rest. Uh, so, so not only does a Pennsylvania wrestler get the top seed in Kyle Snyder, but let's we might as well just put the the second seed against a Pennsylvania wrestler, and that's Ray O'Donnell from Princeton. Um, so, the former Saucon Valley wrestler who's a senior now in Princeton. Yeah, you're gonna have Connor Medbury from Wisconsin uh, in their first round. Yeah, uh, Connor Medbury's been fantastic this season. The senior out of Wisconsin, twenty-five and one. The lone loss coming to Kyle Snyder and a pretty respectable eight-five decision in the Big Ten tournament. So whenever you're you're sticking with Kyle Snyder, you know you're you're for real. So do you have anyone from Pennsylvania getting on the the podium other than Solomon, who we know you're a homer? So I mean that's I, I don't. Solomon is is my lone guy there. Uh, Haynes, yep. I have in the blood round. 
Uh, but it's, it's a pretty tough weight this year, really. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, when you have a guy like Kyle Snyder occupying one of those spots and Connor Medbury, I mean, that's and Ty are, Walls yeah, Ty and, Walls and, and Neville's and Schaefer's wrestling really well. So yeah, it is. It's a tough, tough one. I do have uh, Billy Miller out of Edinburgh, who's not originally a Pennsylvania guy, but out of Pennsylvania school, I have him getting on the podium. Okay. Well, you, you, are you going to post those uh, those predictions, or what are you going to what are you going to do with those, Eric? Uh, I'm going to hide them and see how they go. Uh, okay. Well, I was I would appreciate <laughs> if you 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 shared them. I'd with like the to. Fans. I think we need to go back and revisit who won our uh, our predictions in Double A from uh, the state tournament. What? What? I, I've, I don't think we had any predictions. I don't. Well, think. we had first and second. We were saying who was going to going to come out and who was going to win it. Yeah, I think I probably won it. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I definitely won the state picking them for, for state tournament because we were pretty spot on with the rankings and how they finished in the state. Yeah, yeah, you did you did a great job with that. Uh, I, I stayed out of the AAA. That's that's not my expertise there by any means. I, I defer to you on all those matters. Defer to me and all my bias, apparently, so... <laughs> Um, so, so Eric, we're going to be, we're going to be heading out to St. Louis. Uh, we're going to be providing some coverage, uh, a lot of coverage on, on the NCAAs and specifically how all our Pennsylvania wrestlers, all 49 of them are doing. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to, we're actually going to speak with Luke Pletcher, who's already in St. Louis, the Ohio state true freshman, uh, is making his first trip to the NCAA tournament. So without further ado, let's bring on Luke. Joining us now, special guest, Luke Pletcher, three-time state champion from Latrobe. Uh, he's making his first trip to the NCAA tournament. Luke, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Luke, this is, I mean, this is a sort of a interesting point in your career because a lot of people didn't have you uh, even in the lineup yet this, this time of the, the year. Um, but you get thrown in, and you do pretty well in your, reg- or your, your true freshman year. Were you surprised that you were thrown in and that you've you've done this well, or were you were you ready to go? Um, I was surprised that I threw it over thrown in, just because, um, being that I went two months or a month or so in red shirt, and uh, I don't know, no one expects anybody to get hurt, and that's what happened. You know, I was the next man in line. They asked me if I wanted to do it, and I said, let's let's go for it. So. That's how I happened, yes. Now, Luke, watching you in high school for for uh, last four years, very calm, cool, and collective on the mat. You were all, always uh, pretty much were in control of matches, and you're always in tight matches. It seems like, especially with Mickey Phillippe. But um, you've really you've really uh, separated yourself in, in college. I would say, what what's been the difference from the short time when you were in Latrobe to now? in the Ohio state wrestling room. And it just seems like your, your skills and your, um, repertoire has just expanded, uh, exponentially. What, how is that? What do you credit that to? Uh, a couple things I would say I went, I left, I went to Ohio state like three days after I graduated high school. So I was there all summer. And I mean, from that, just going there in the summer, I mean, I got, got there and I got over that, you know, the freshman beating period that I think everybody goes through. And, you know, I got over that pretty quickly. And then I started to like, by the end of the summer, I started like to get a hang of it and how it was. And then I came back after a couple of weeks at home and then Travell started running practices and stuff, started getting close to him. And like, he just started preaching the team. I don't know, just not to, not to care, but like not worrying about results as much and just going out there and, you know, doing the best we can and shooting and really just started preaching, putting as much offense out there as possible. So that was kind of a problem I had in, yeah. in high school a little bit, but started doing that and putting as much as I can together. Good. Now, Luke, talking about just, you, you said you went through that sort of freshman beating a little bit uh, in the early parts of it. I mean, you look around in, in your, your practice room. I, I can't imagine what it's like. Uh, with the partners that you have, like NATO um, and, and Micah Jordan, all those guys that just you, you guys are all were some of the top wrestlers in the nation as, as high school wrestlers, and now here you are all wrestling together. What's it been like just to have uh, that round robin of just such talented guys? It's pretty sweet. I mean, I mean, not too many places you can go. You can wrestle 
when it's the world champion at your weight. And Mayo was probably the, one of the strongest person I've ever wrestled in my life. And I mean, just if there's anything that you're struggling with, there's someone that's really good that's good at it and will give you the right feel. And I mean, it's it's been the perfect perfect thing for me. So I get to grow with anything I ever need problems with. Luke, uh, Ohio State's coming off a, a Big Ten championship. Do you guys talk at all uh, about the, the team race, or is it kind of just you go out there and do your job and, and those things will take care of themselves at the NCAA tournament? Uh, a little bit of both. I mean, we obviously talk about it. It's something we're working for. and we, Everybody wants to be – everybody on the team wants to be team national champs and national champs individually. So, I mean – and Coach, not only does he preach his – for us to like get bonus points when we can and do everything right but if we're wrestling the way we should be and the way that we can then it's going to take care of itself so a little bit of both but just making sure we're on point mentally and looking for the right things Luke, we are just—we obviously just got done with our, uh, you know, high school season f- for the PIAA, and um, we, we've been interviewing mm-hmm. a lot of the, the seniors that are uh, just finished up, and you know, a lot of them we, we talk about finishing on top and making that transition to college. How were you able, to, or how difficult was it for you to make that transition? Um, I know you said you you went to Ohio State basically three days after you graduate, but you know, how difficult is it to go from from high school all star? to battling in the room and just handling grades, being away from home for the first time. You know, how, how do you, how does a young person like yourself go through that and come out on top? Uh, I don't know. You just gotta, you just gotta realize you gotta grow up. You know, you don't, I mean, it's up to you now. It's not your, your mom, your dad, your coach, your whoever pushed you in high school or whether it was whatever it is, you just gotta grow up. It's all about, you know, you gotta take care of yourself and you know, everything's not going to be perfect. So, I mean, you're going to get beat up in the practice room and everything, whatever might go wrong, it might happen. So you just got to roll with it. Luke, uh, I know you're already out in, in St. Louis. Uh, what are the feelings like? Do you expect to be nervous when, you know, I know you've been in big tournaments before, but obviously the, the NCAA tournament is, is a little different. What do you think your, your, your feelings are going to be like as you walk in there for the first time? Uh, I don't know what to expect. I mean, I thought I was going to be nervous for Big Ten, and I really wasn't. I wasn't too bad. Um, but I don't know. I haven't really, I haven't really got too nervous at all yet this year. But I don't know if I'm. I'm sure I'm going to be nervous. I mean, this is what you know. You worked your whole life for four shots at this one thing, so naturally I'm going to be nervous. But I just can't let it get to me. And I mean. I'll be all right. <laughs> Luke, it won't be like when you wrestled Scotty Parker in the finals of States and you, you ran off the mat and you know, you almost, you almost crapped your pants, uh, crapped your singlet. Yeah. That was, that was, yeah. you, so you've, you've been in some big matches before, right. And some, some high pressure oh, yeah. moments. Yeah. So now, I think that's another reason why I don't get too nervous. Cause I'm in tra- I traveled a lot whenever I was in high school and been in a lot of big matches. So, now, Luke, we're uh, Eric and uh, myself. We're actually driving out with Mark Billet, who uh, was was someone who was close to you, and um, we're going to be spending nine and a half hours in a car with him. I know you've spent some time traveling with him. What's his music selection like? Should I mean, should I be playing rap music for him? Um, what What is it that he likes to listen to? I don't know, but I wouldn't play rap. Positive <laughs> about that. Maybe not rap. <laughs> No, he's funny. Mark Mark Bill is uh, uh can can you talk a little bit about Mark because you know we've become real close with him over the last couple of years and I, I can still remember your freshman year at States. Um I think it was his first year of not coaching um and he was sitting beside the mat. He's taking pictures of you, trying to take pictures but he's he's sort of shadow wrestling as you're wrestling and and as you win, he just you can see the the tear coming down his eye and and how happy he was uh, for you as a freshman. Can you talk about that relationship with Mark Billet and and how uh, how you two have have grown uh, together? Yeah, well, he was he my dad's a teacher at the junior high and he was a teacher at the junior high, so they lunch together every day. So that's how I knew him initially. And so I mean I've known him for pretty all my life. I'm for a large part of it and. I don't know. He just helped me out with a lot of things. I mean, if I ever had a question or I had problems with anything, I could 
call him. I know he's going to be, he'll help me out with any way he can. And that's just the way, that's just the kind of guy he is. He's, he's, he's a man. He's an the old man with wisdom. <laughs> that, that that is the truth luke and he he likes to to preach that to myself all the time too Let, lets me know oh yeah he right loves, he loves to talk <laughs> <laughs> well, well, He'll probably kill me for that. well yeah that's all right we're, we're gonna have a long time to, to talk and, and and you know on our way out to st louis tomorrow so um luke oh, we, yeah. we we wish you the the best of luck i mean it seems like yesterday you were stepping on the mat for the first time as a as a freshman um, and it's, it's hard to believe that you're already, uh, at the NCAA tournament as a, as a true freshman. So, um, but it sounds like you're, you're ready to go and, uh, you got, you got a clear mind. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Luke. Well, we look forward to seeing you in St. Louis. Best of luck. And, uh, we'll be seeing you yeah. soon. Sounds good. I'll talk to you guys this week. All right. Thanks, Luke. Thanks, Luke. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Just want to thank Luke Pletcher for taking some time out. And, uh, well, he's as cool as a cucumber, isn't he, Eric? Yeah, for a freshman, very well spoken. Says he doesn't get nervous. Uh, I- I'm going to be nervous whenever I get into the arena. I can tell you that. Yeah, I know, for sure. Me, me as, uh, as well. And, you know, Luke's always been that way ever since he was a freshman. Just sort of a quiet kid, but a uh, little bit of a jokester, right? And, uh, you know, he, he's always been uh, just a really respectful kid. I've, I've uh, you know, interviewed him and talked with him for a long time over the last four years and uh, really, really just got a good head on his shoulders. Um, and I'm sure Mark Bill will tell us all about that on our way out. O- overall, Eric, I'm really looking forward to this trip. And uh, you, can, you can tune in to PA Power Wrestling for all your wrestling needs. Uh, the high school season may be over, but we still have a lot of Pennsylvania power out there uh, at the NCAAs. You can look at uh, how guys have fared in Division Three and Division II. Uh, we had 10 uh, All-Americans in both those classes in, in Division Three and Division II. Uh, if you visit PAPowerWrestling.com, you can see who they were. Uh, we're also going to have the Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic, the lineup coming out for that for Pennsylvania wrestlers and who they're going to face, the toughest guys in the nation. Um, it's a Rose Bowl of Wrestling for a reason. It's it's a great event. Uh, looking forward to covering that in uh, two weeks, uh, next Saturday, not this Saturday, next Saturday. Um, so stay tuned for a lot of coverage from St. Louis, from PA Power Wrestling. So in the meantime, uh, give us a review on, on iTunes, like our podcast, uh, find us on Facebook, friend us, follow us on Twitter, and tune in to PA Power Wrestling for all your wrestling needs. Until next time.